Good evening. Good to see the Lord's house tonight. I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, aren't you thankful that we got a good, cool place to get to come worship the Lord? Amen. I wonder how many of us would come and, and, and worship and be a part of the church service if we didn't have air conditioning. Lord, help us. Uh, we'll all go work in the, in the heat and all that, but I, I don't know how many of us would show up and just sit and worship the Lord. But I'm glad that God is able and he has provided us a wonderful place. And uh, I say that because what, what was something that was really intriguing to me and really powerful to me, I went on a mission trip one time to Uganda. And when I say they don't have anything, I mean they don't have anything. And uh, I saw people show up, get up under a, a big old oak tree on a, one of the hottest days you've ever seen, and I'm talking about throw down worship the Lord. And I thought, man, if, we, if more people in our society would, would have that desire to, to worship the Lord, uh, we would be a lot better off in, in this country. But I'm thankful for the luxuries that we have. And, and I don't know about you, but if I was a lost person, a day like today make me want to get saved. Amen? I mean, it's hot out there today. Could you even imagine what it would be like uh, in, in hell? And um, So I'm thankful that I'm saved tonight. And I'm thankful that I'm in God's house. And I'm thankful to, to be here with you all. Uh, we had a wonderful time this week. I want to thank everyone that came out and helped to support us Sunday night at Sardis. Just a wonderful time of fellowship, a wonderful time of revival over there. Had a, a, a just a big crowd of you guys came, and that was a big encouragement to me, and I uh, was thankful for that, and uh, just always love to be a part of uh, revival at Sardis. Sardis is one of my favorite places, of course, where I grew up, where I was born again at, and uh, under Brother Darnell's ministry, so uh, he, he is a, a, a big blessing to me, so I, I appreciate everybody that came out, but we went back last night. Brother Shannon was preaching last night, and he did preach on hell, amen, and uh, boy, it was, a, it was an amazing service. We had a good time, and looking forward to what God uh, is going to do for them over there tonight. I think they had one saved last night after service, so we praise the Lord for that. Amen. So you keep praying. If you haven't already, you pray for their revival tonight. But uh, we've got a special guest with us tonight. We're going to take prayer requests here in a minute and just do something a little different tonight. Uh, I've always said when God called me to preach and allowed me to pastor that uh, I wanted this place to be a, a place where the men of God and those that were willing to work and serve God could come and just have a have a time to fellowship, get loved on. Uh, one of our mission plans, Brother Jamie here, one of our mission statements is here is we're going to love people, amen? And we're going to love all people, and especially God's people. And uh, we got God's uh, God's men to are here, and we, he's come by tonight, Brother Jamie Doss, and he's with True Light Rescue Mission. And uh, he's just going to tell you about what he's doing and uh, you, so you can be praying for him. I'm sure he brought some prayer cards with him. And uh, you, you can pick one of those up and just pray for the work that he's doing and listen to that. And he's got a message that uh, he wants to preach to us tonight, or I want him to preach to us tonight. And uh, so that'll be a little change of pace. And then we'll get back on Bible study next week and look forward to what God's going to do there. So uh, looking forward to him sharing with us tonight. Uh, before we get do that, but we're going to have word of prayer but special prayer request i want to say thank you i don't know how many of you know that my father was in the hospital but they uh, they took him to the hospital my mother did saturday morning of course sunday we we just we kind of did a raise your hand if you got a prayer request and that was mine but he, he had been really sick with a uti and uh, had actually got sepsis before the when they got in there so i'm just so thankful that my mother got in there when she did uh, he was a very, very sick man, but praise God, he got to come home from the hospital today. He's feeling much, much better, but you continue to pray for him. Uh, he, he, he needs your prayers. My mother needs your prayers, so uh, I appreciate you doing that. Pray for Miss Hannah Heron. She's been really, really sick for the last few days. She's caught a cold or, or some kind of virus and hasn't felt good, so you pray for her. Continue to pray for Brother Tim Heron as well, as he has some some issues going on with his cancer. He's having a lot of pain and stuff with that. So you pray for him. Also, um, Miss Sonia Wilson, she, Brother Todd texted me today and said, hey, we're back from vacation, but Miss Sonia's got COVID now. So y'all must please pray for Miss Sonia as she recovers from that and, and tries to make it through that. And he, he was there taking care of her. And of course, we don't want to want to come and put anybody else at risk. So you pray for Miss Sonia. Any other prayer requests tonight?
passed away this past week. Uh, he is he is um, drowned. So just a just another heartbreaking loss in this community in this in this county. Uh, it seems like that happens way too often, and uh, we're sorry uh, for that loss. But we'll be praying for this community and that and the school and all of the friends. Pray for that family. They're going to need it. Amen. Any others tonight? Okay, let's remember the pots, family. The things in the pots. Let it be with the Lord. Remember, remember that one. Steve Johnson. Okay, we'll have some more surgeries. Joel Sheik. Remember Joel Sheets and remember his family as well as they make these hard decisions. Anybody else tonight? Yes. Thank you, Brother Phil. Yeah. Brother Greg Lavender, um, of course, you know, he's been our, our HVAC guy here for years and years. He was diagnosed with stage four cancer not too long ago, and we've been praying for him. Brother Clyde asked the church to pray for him. We had put had him on a prayer list and been praying. He took around the chemo and said went back for a CT scan and uh, done a scan and said that it showed up that they couldn't find a stitch of cancer anywhere. Amen. So it was gone, but uh, we're going to take another round of chemotherapy just for uh, for good measure, but uh, praise the Lord for that. He asked us to continue to pray and uh, just keep the prayers coming. We praise God for that praise report. And Hey, listen, prayer still works, y'all. Amen. Prayer is still powerful. And uh, prayer works, and uh, when nothing else will, I know the power of prayer in my own life, but uh, uh, just from some things that God has done for me in the past. But I tell you, when it, it, if a man will pray with faith, believing, the Bible says anything is possible to him. We're thankful for that. Anybody else tonight? All right. If nobody else, no other requests, let's remember... Uh, coming up, just a couple of announcements before we go to prayer. Don't forget tomorrow we're going to, oh, to get peaches, uh, going down to Musella, Georgia. If you want to come right with us, go get peaches. We'll, we'll have a good time. We're leaving here at 9 a.m. We'll go eat in Barnesville and then go on down and get peaches, come back and do a little antiquing maybe in, in uh, somewhere if we find a good antique shop and just have a good day of fellowship. And that, that's open to everybody, but especially our senior adults want you guys to go and and be a part of that. And then, uh, so don't be much in prayer for us as we travel tomorrow. If you can't go, uh, we'll, we'll be we'll be looking forward to that. Um, there was another one I had. Oh yeah, coming up very soon. We will be meeting with our um, nominating committee, and Sunday we will have uh, those the list of uh, positions that are available for someone to volunteer for. We'll hand those out. I want you to start looking over them, start praying over those positions where God would, might, would have you to serve in church, and uh, then our nominating committee will meet and, and get that finalized so we can elect our new officers. Do y'all believe in, I believe it's five weeks from this coming Sunday is when the new church year starts here and the new uh, officers take over and new teachers step up if, uh, if we have some that step down. So uh, I want you to pray about it. What, God, what would God have you to do? And can I say this? There's a job for everybody. Amen. Everybody has a place to work and a place to uh, to serve. And I want God to, you just pray that God would put you where he, he can use you the most and for the most benefit. But we'll be doing that. Those will be available for you on Sunday. We appreciate what our ladies and that committee does for our uh, teacher luncheon appreciation. Uh, we always do that before they start school, and that will be Monday. 
and like Miss Paige said, they need all the help they can get. And uh, if you, I know a lot of you ladies work, a lot of you men don't know how to cook, so you depend on your wife to do that. But uh, if, if if you guys cook uh, at work and not able to be here, we understand that. But if you if you got something, if you want to be a help, you can bring it and uh, put it back there and put the directions on what to do with it. You can bring something cold or whatever. But these ladies need that that help because that's a big outreach to these these teachers in, the, the, in this community, and uh, we appreciate them working so hard to do that. And I'm sure they would be much, uh, be very happy for somebody new to step onto that committee to help them with that this year, so you be praying about that too. All right, anybody else tonight? That's something. You know, I think about that that lady, uh, that widow, when you were telling that story. He came to when he sent Elijah down to that widow woman and said, you know, bake me first a cake. Yeah. And uh, she could have said, No, I ain't baking you anything. This is for me and my family. Yeah. But he, she immediately went. She didn't fuss. She didn't ask any questions. She just did as the Lord said. And the Lord and. and I listened to a message the other day. Some of you probably listened to it too. Great preacher on um, YouTube does, but it's called Blessings at the Bottom of the Barrel. And listen, I'm telling you, God is faithful to bless. If you'll work for Him, if you if you'll be faithful to Him to do what He wants you to do, I promise you, you can't out give God. And he, he is so faithful to give us what we what He knows the desires of our heart before. And uh, boy, I'm thankful that you said that. Thank you, Miss. And listen, I. I didn't want to text you and ask you that because I didn't want to lose you on Wednesday night, amen? Man, you you kept me, had, I had to have my pencil sharp every Wednesday night for Miss, because uh, she's going to ask one of them hard questions, amen? But listen, I knew that God uh, put on my heart that, that she could be used downstairs for these young'uns and these babies, and uh, I appreciate your, your faithfulness to do that. And uh, so somebody else may, God may, may be dealing with you to do that, so uh, just obey him. Obedience is better than sacrifice. All right, nobody else has got anything tonight. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And then we'll ask Brother Jamie to come up. And uh, Brother, you just share with you uh, about your, your mission work that you're doing. Share what the Lord has laid upon your heart for us. And uh, you just, you'll close the service out as you see fit. Let's pray. Lord, I love you tonight. God, I thank you so much for another opportunity to be in your house. Lord, it's such a precious time that we have each Wednesday night. Lord, where we can gather, Lord, and just fellowship one with another. Lord, the Bible says iron sharpeneth iron. Lord, sometimes by Wednesday, I need my blade sharpened, Lord. And I need these, these people to, to, to rub up against me and, Lord, just uh, shave off the, the rust on my countenance, God, and make me shine again. And, Lord, I, I thank you for these people. And, Lord, I thank you for the man of God that you sent by this place this, we, this week. And, Lord, I pray that you just touch his ministry and touch him and give him power to preach tonight according to what you would laid upon his heart. Lord, you've heard every request tonight. And Lord, you are a faithful God as we've already heard testimony about tonight, God. And Lord, we know that you have the power to move in every situation, whether it be a physical need that needs to be touched or a financial need. Lord, there may be some in our midst that's in financial need right now. But God, you, you're not broke. And God, you can send the blessings from heaven. And Lord, we just pray that you touch them in that situation. Lord, if we pray for those that need health uh, uh, touches tonight, God. You are still the great physician, God, and Lord, able to touch. And Lord, we just thank you for it. And Lord, those that, that are even unspoken, Lord, you know those requests. And 
We pray that you move according to your will. God, I thank you for your love and your, your, your son Jesus that died on the cross for our sins. Lord, I pray that you just uh, encourage us tonight, Lord, through the word. And, Lord, I pray that you sharpen us. And, Lord, you just, uh, if there be some that, that's not saved here tonight, Lord, I don't know where everybody stands with you, but you know, God, if they need to come to know you, Lord, I pray that they'd be convicted and come forward tonight, give their heart to Jesus. And, Lord, we just give you the honor and the praise for everything that you do in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, Brother Jim. Brother Jeter, I appreciate that. Amen. Appreciate everybody being here. Place, amen, on a Wednesday night. Amen. You could be a lot of places, but you're here at the house of God. We thank God for that. Thank God for the pastors for inviting us this way. Is Brandon in the church house tonight? Is that still the place? No, he's not here. Uh, pastor didn't admit me. I want to thank you, Pastor, for the kindness of the church. Um, well, he did for me, I guess, this, this past Monday. Uh, we, we've been babying an issue with our, with our, our vehicle out there that God blessed with. That, that vehicle out there that God Blessed with but but Mike Van Horn the ministry you, you guys know Brother Van Horn he's, he's a dear friend of mine that's the reason I know you guys here tonight Amen e either way that Brother Van Horn actually uh, his ministry give us that vehicle back in the spring and Brother Jeter we, we put twenty thousand miles on that van since about April of, of, of this year and we thank God for that vehicle but it was given us a little bit of issue this week and uh, it just Lord worked out where we could get in contact with Brother Jeter and he told us to take over to Brother, Brother Brandon and thank God he took care of for us in no time we just want to praise his name for God being good to us Amen and God, God is definitely good to me Church I. I think I was a good testimony we heard there a lot while ago. That was that was amazing. Thank God that God's still speaking to hearts. Amen. 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 Uh, we all always want to have our hearts tender. Yep. Uh, so it's when God God is moving, God God will speak to us. We, we can be be available there to let Him use us in, in, in a mighty way. Amen. Appreciate us just mention who we are. We are. Uh, my name is Jamie Doss. Uh, I'm, I'm the director of True Light Rest Commission. It's out of Sandy Ridge, North Carolina. Uh, my pastor is Brother Randy Cook. He's been my pastor there. I guess I've been there a little over a year preaching. We, we went there back in January 2022. Uh, start, start going to church there at True Light and Shine Light Baptist Church. Our pastor, Pastor Shine Light Baptist Church, the mission is called True Light Rescue Mission. I'll get that right in a second. Amen. Uh, thank God for my testimony. Thank God for God saving me. Uh, raised, in, raised in church. I um, was in church all my life. Uh, I think the testimony given last night, I preached that people were raised in church and just, just you know, thinking that they, just because you're raised in church don't mean you're a Christian. Is that right? Uh, no, no more than sitting inside of a garage makes you automobile. So it doesn't work that way. But thank God, that 18-year-old young man, God did speak to my heart. God did show me I was lost on my way to hell. I was at a place called Respecca, Georgia, Faith Baptist Camp. Uh, it was on a Tuesday night, August 11th, 1992. Almost be 31 years ago here in a few weeks. I thank God that God, God saved me. Amen. And God changed me. I mean, when God saves me, God changed your life. You're never the same. You don't get over that that night. That's, that's something God makes you. Think. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new preacher. Right. Old things are past. We're told all things are becoming. I'm glad that God saved me and God changed me. God also, God also did call us to preach right after we were saved. And I thank God he let us start preaching. About a month later, we were preaching the word of God. Amen. It's amazing how God lets you be used. Amen. If you only get usable, amen. God will take us here where it's out for his own glory. Amen. Either way, we thank God for God let us preach. We was preaching for several years, about 19 years, I guess, before God. Let us go to the ministry called Rock of Ages Prison Ministry. You guys have heard of Rock of Ages Prison Ministry? I know you guys saw you many prayer cards back there on your little display back there, Brother Jeter, but thank God for that great ministry. We was with them about 14 years with Rock of Ages from about 2000, about 2014. Uh, my wife actually was having some health issues at the time, so we had to leave the ministry. I hate doing that. I, I really love the Dr. Ellis, Dr. Dunstall, all those guys. They're my friends. Still, a lot of them guys are still, I, I contact with them guys all the time. They're just dear friends of mine. Thank God for them. But it was God's will for us to resign and, and go home and take care of my family, amen. amen. Family is first. Yeah, right. uh, you, know, ain't, you ain't God and the family. If you did get that or you get, you got it all mixed up, amen. But family is definitely important, but we, we got to make sure we serve God, make sure you take care of your family as well. So we, we, we resigned the ministry there, and um, we come home and took care of family. My wife, actually, her health got a lot better. We praise God for that. God, God did bless there. Uh, we started working a public job, amen. I, I mean, mission got to come and work. you got to work, amen. I think I was able to do that, whatever. We started working, and um, back in, I guess, around July, about three years ago, I guess it was, uh, my daughter come to visit. I'm going to visit her in a little while. She lives over in Walterburg, South Carolina. Her and her husband come to visit us there uh, for her mom's birthday and for her birthday around the 1st of July, 2020, um, and they had COVID, amen. They brought into our life, and um, me and my wife and my, my twin daughters, Sarah and Savannah, I got three girls. All, all, all of us got that, that virus that time. Uh, my daughter Sarah got it the worst, and then me and my wife and my old daughter, her sister, got it about a week later. 
Well, my wife didn't, didn't uh, do so well with the church. She actually passed away back on August 1st of 2020. And um, it was a very, very hard time for us that time. Still hard for us today. But God's still good. Amen. And, and, uh, and, and God's grace is sufficient. Amen. God, God has been good to us. It's, um, I wouldn't wish it upon anybody, but I tell you, I thank God that God let me go through it. Amen. Because God, God said we should be thankful when we go through trials. Amen. I, I, I was reading that verse from James today. First of James 1 says, Count all joy when you fall in diverse temptations. Amen. Uh, it's hard, hard to count all joy then. If you look back on it, you just, just realize the mind of God. We should thank God that God is still good to us. Amen. We thank God for that. So God uh, didn't let us quit on him at that time. Through life. But Brother Doss, how can you keep on going for God? I, I, I say, church, where could you go? Amen. Right. Uh, you know, Peter said, well, he said, well, where can we go, God? So Peter told the Lord, so where, where can we go to? Is there any, any turn back on God? Is, is there any place we can say, okay, Lord, I'm done. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go back to, the, go back to fishing. I'm going to go back to the world. No, it's nothing like that. He says, we've got to keep on going. Um, and, and God called me to preach. I, I, I want to be honored, honored by calling and keep on going for him. And um, then my, my, my daughter, my, my, my youngest daughter, actually had an accident on, on the way to church one Sunday night. Now, we, we was at church on Sunday. My, my other daughter now, that uh, her, her and her husband, they actually represent the same ministry we represent called True Light Rescue Mission. Her and her boyfriend, times her husband now, and my mother, we were at church, amen. And, and, and my daughter uh, called her sister and said, tell, tell dad I've been in an accident. C come, and, come and help me because I'm in an accident. Buddy, come see what's going on with me, that kind of thing. The church, mind you what Savannah was, was like, my daughter, she actually was flipped her car about three or four times. Her car was laying in the side of the road like this, and her arm was underneath the car along with the bun of her hair. So she was like this, just stuck in that position. And somehow she was able to get her cell phone out and call her sister in, a, in somewhat of a, of a, I guess, understandable voice. I can't understand how, how she did that, but she did, amen. So we, we rushed this scene. I, did, I was driving fast enough I should have drove, but anyway, we, we got there, amen, safe and sound. Um, and she was she was going to be uh, transported to, to a, uh, they call it trauma hospital. They thought she was maybe worse than what she was. They ended up checking her out there at the scene. So we soon as we go into a trauma hospital, we took we, we rode behind the ambulance out there, and um, on the way there, we were just hoping she was going to be okay, you know, because just just my wife just passed away from acute about, about a, you know not long before that. They was getting ready to start their their final year of high school. My my, my twins were just real 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 you know uneasy feeling of going through this with my family and everything. Uh, but either way, God God give us grace, Amen. But as we got to the hospital church, you, during that time, you know how things work. It's a merge room. Only one person can go in there with you to, to, to the place. So I can be the only one to go in there, be with Savannah during that time. And the rest of my family waited about two or three hours so I could even do that. So as I went in there, they, they said, we're going to check her out. We're going to evaluate her overnight, and we'll let her go home tomorrow morning. So I said, okay. So we'll, we'll, I went and told my family, Sarah, you take you know, my mother and, and Caleb. Y'all go home, and y'all come back to us tomorrow. Uh, Sarah and neither one had been driving very long at that time. So I really thought it'd be better for her going home, you know, that kind of thing. So they did. About 12, 31 o'clock, church, the, the nurse come through and said, we want to do some more testing. And did some more testing. And they said, well, she looks like everything come through, come through okay. We're going to let her go on home tonight, amen. Um, that sounds good, amen. But, but my, my ride just was left about, about two hours ago. So I had no way of getting home at this point in time. So I called my, my physical brother. My, my brother, he, he went through a lot of health troubles that time. He, he'd been on the ventilator, had a trachea at a certain time, and he really wasn't physically able to come and get me. He said, won't you call your friend Randy Cook, amen, my, my pastor now at the time, amen. But he said, call Brother Randy, see if he'll come pick you up. So I give Brother Cook a call, and I, but Brother Randy call, uh, says, Brother Doss, I'm, I'm, I'd be glad to come get you. It about an hour to get there, but I'd be glad to come get you. Praise God for your friends, amen. Uh, was it Br Brother Fant said last night how he was broke down on the side of the road and called somebody. You know, didn't, I'm glad he didn't tell who it was. I hope he went to the church house either, amen. But Brother Mapper said he was, he was broke down on the side of the road and called somebody. They, they didn't come pick him up, but. Thank God my friend, my pastor, did, did come pick us up, amen, took us home. And on the way home, we, we would begin to talk about just, just the will of God, talk about things, just me, me and my pastor. We, we lived about five miles from each other, we, but we didn't know each other until he, he drove all the way, almost seven hours up to Ohio to a prison. I was coordinating. We, we met up there in Ohio at a prison. I, I met him up there, but, but, but uh, Jeter, and we, and we met. Thank God we've become best friends since then, been best friends for years. But either way, um, he come pick me up there at church. Began talking about, about things and said, Brother, Brother Randy, I want you to pray about a ministry God's been dealing my heart about. And then I just stopped. I said, Never mind, preacher. I, I, don't, I don't know if this is part of the best time to talk about it. He said, Brother Jimmy, you, you do not do me like that. He said, My wife does it to me all the time. She never wants to tell me what's on her mind. Please tell me what's on your heart. Amen. So 
We laughed at everything, so I told him, I said, Preacher, I think God's laid upon my heart to, to start rescue me. And I had no idea, preach, uh, church, that, that God was working it out like he was. And I had no idea that, that church was already getting ready to purchase a building for rescue mission at that time. I had no idea, but, but God knew those things, amen. amen. And, and God was just putting those things together. So I said, Brother Cook, if, if this is God's will, just help me pray about it. Let's pray about it for an entire month, 30 days. And 30 days, if God gives me strength, if God gives me the green light, I, I'll, I'll leave my church I've been at from the time I was born, amen, 40-some years of my life, almost 50 years, and I'll come and we'll, we'll join there with you, preach, and we'll help you with this ministry. So church, I began to pray, and God gave me scripture in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, and verse 24 through verse 26. Let me read you this verse here quickly. 2 Timothy 2, verse 24 through 26. Apostle Paul here is writing to Timothy. He says there, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, or that teach means you're willing to teach, maybe like it lay back in the back was willing to teach. It's 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 a willingness. God wants to be willing vessels for him, maybe. Not not be a fight, not be striving, not be against everybody in the community or against all the other ministries and, and, and priests like we find going in, in our day and hour, amen. But be gentle unto all men. Verse 25 there says this church says, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. You know, if a man is put pouring bud dumber in, in, in his mouth or he's putting uh, illegal drugs up his up his arm, he's opposing himself. And we got in meekness. God wants me to give me a scripture to make sure I, I am have a, a spirit in, in me, church, so I can work with these men who are doing these things in meekness. It says, and if God peer venture, will give them repentance to, to the knowledge of the truth. I believe that the old time repentance, don't you, church? Amen. amen. Repentance is when you change your mind about your sin and God changed your life. That's what repentance is all about. That's what God did for me. And if you're saved, that's what God did for you as well. And if you're on drugs or alcohol, God do the same thing for those individuals, amen. And verse 26 is where I, I, I made major uh, thought here, come verse 26, and that they may recover themselves. You know, uh, when a person is, is involved in any kind of recovery ministry, any, anything going to get out of the situation and get better, church, don't you understand, like I understand, they got to want that themselves? Right. doesn't matter how bad mom and dad wants their son to get off drugs or alcohol, it doesn't matter. That, they don't even, I mean, they're not going to get off until they want to get off that stuff, you see. Right. Don't matter how much their wife wants her husband to come clean and, and be a better husband, it don't matter until he wants some help. You see what I'm saying tonight, church? And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. You better believe that, that, that the Satan has a snare or a trap for every one of us here tonight in this church tonight. Amen. No matter what, what your name is, no matter how long you've been saved, no matter your age, God has a trap for all of us tonight. And we all better be make sure we're sober and vigilant and, 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 and watching out for the devil. He's walking around as a royal lion, seeking who may devour. He's doing that tonight, amen. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. And church, God gave me these scriptures during that, that time I was praying that month time back in August of 2022, or 2021, I should say. And, and God just confirmed my heart, this is the will of God, amen. Right. It's just, isn't it great to be in God's will in that church? Right. If you know what I'm saying, you, you can say amen because you know if you're not in God's will, it's just not, no peace there, there's no joy there. Amen. It's just nothing like being, being in the middle center of God's will. So as I begin to, to pray about this thing and, and God give us his peace about this thing, I, I, we, of course we moved from our church we was at there. My, my grandpa started that church back in the 60s with some other men, amen, just place I love. Like you said, brother, just place where you love a church like going over there to stars coming here. That it was hard for me to move that place, but it was God's will, amen. And we went there and, and God began to help us there and we, we've been starting this ministry. We started deputation back in January and we can honestly say that, that God's been blessing our deputation, amen. Uh, we had church last night take us on for support here locally, amen. Uh, we, we, we're trying to do a, 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 a which I'll get that in a second. God's help us raise some funds. We'll get that in a few moments. But more about the ministry. You say, preacher, is there a need for the True Light Rescue Commission? There, there is definitely a need for this ministry. Amen. This need, this ministry is, is a situation where every year, roughly thirteen thousand homeless people die every year. That's more than one hundred thirty people also die every day in America overdosing on opioids. More than 10 percent of our children in our country live with a parent with alcohol problems, according to a 2012 study. So, we're, we're homeless people, drugs, alcohol. This is a very need for rescue mission. It's a great need out there. This sister here always gets to me, church. In 2013, an estimated 22.7 million Americans, which is 8.6 percent of our country, they needed treatment for a problem related to drugs or alcohol. But only two and a half million people, less than one percent of Americans, received help at that special facility. You say, preacher, why? I think maybe some of that reason may be church because that person didn't want to go. That's, that's, that's evident. But also, church, there's just nowhere out there for them to go to. 
even Jerusalem, where he goes to preach, you know, honestly, there, there may be facilities out there, but are they like faith like we are, amen? They believe in the King James Bible, but a lot of them don't, amen? Right. A lot of them, a lot of them don't believe, and, and, and they all kind of different denominations, but, but, but I'm talking about the end of our Baptist church, our, our people believe like you guys believe here tonight, church. There's not many up there up our way. I know I'm, I'm a long ways home. I get that. We're, we're several hours from home, but up there where I'm at, you got to go two or three hours to find any kind of facility like what I'm talking about tonight, amen? But God put upon my heart, church, God burdened us for this ministry. And it's a need, amen. I, I've shown you the need. I've shown you the statistics why it's a need, and God has called us to do this work. He said, preach, what's your work? It's a mission. It's actually a residential program. We'll have a place for these men to sleep and, and food to eat, clothes to wear, um, help them with their, their, their social situation, whether it be medical, dental care, any kind of driver's life, social security cards, any of these things we can help these men with. But the number one reason we help these men is the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Teach them and preach to them about the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are currently already having a, an addiction class we teach every Tuesday night there at, at the church. Um, and thank God is blessing that ministry. God let us see several folks could help with that ministry. We thank God for that. And uh, we're all at the church helping spread by a need that we're trying to raise funds for the renovation of that building. Um, we, we have purchased a building there but in Sandy Ridge where the ministry will be located at. We already have a chapel that's already been renovated that's been used as, as, a, as a chapel every, every Thursday night, every, every Sunday afternoon. We have church there. Right now, but, but the, the building beside it is a 5,000 square foot building. Our church bought that building and paid cash for $25,000. I mean, it's a 5,000 square foot building. It's a pretty, pretty good price for a building that size, but it's completely gutted out. The, the owners who own that building, they actually, the building got destroyed because of their drug and alcohol addiction. So it's amazing how God would turn around and let us come in and, and, and work on that, that, that place there to, to get quite ready for people to come in and get help for their drug and alcohol addiction. Amen. That's my God I serve, amen. But in the meantime, church, we, we've actually put a roof on that building, which is another $15,000 we've actually, the church has paid for. And we thank God God has definitely helped us. That's $40,000 our church alone has already put into that building. And we're looking at because of, of just renovating a building church, it's stuff's not, not cheap nowadays. Um, supplies, when you talk about, you know, ceiling tile, insulation, and cheap, I mean, all these things are expensive. And, and we're trying to raise a, a, a total of about $100,000. And God's bringing that money in. Um, he really is. Uh, we, we had a church here just the other day. Paul said, said if you would, we're going we're to watch you, Brother Jesus. We're going to watch your ministry. If you guys will raise 10000 over the next 60 days, we'll match it. We'll give you additional $10,000. Amen. We've already got that church in like two or three weeks. So, so God's blessing this ministry. Amen. I'm just amazed at what God's doing. But just help us pray, church, that God would meet this need. We get this money raised. Get the ministry started. Get these men here. And we already got a room there in the chapel that we're going to start using as soon as we get we get get that fit room finished even before we get the building in play we're we want to do something for god and we want to see god do work you just pray for us that god help us there that god would help us do work for him amen, amen. deuteronomy chapter number four nine, deuteronomy chapter number four i, I am looking at the clock i'm gonna keep you out here before nine o'clock amen no i'm kidding that's alabama time nine o'clock no i'm picking you guys I, I'm, I'm, I'm exactly what time the preacher wants to be done we're gonna do our best to do that for you tonight amen deuteronomy chapter number four there we're gonna look at verse number one we're reading verse number nine and we'll, we'll give you a thought here from the scripture that God give us. Amen. Um, we thank God for God. God help us through the word of God. Hope it can help you tonight. And we do have prayer cards. The preacher's already stated. We wish you please get one of those and pray for us when you leave. Man. Amen. Deuteronomy 4 there in verse 1. The Bible there does say, church, now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for do them that you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God your fathers giveth you. Number two there, verse two, that you shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor, for all the men that follow Baal Peor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. I like verse four, but you that did cleave unto the Lord your God are, are alive, every one of you to this day. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Those ones that do right, God will take care of his, his, his own. Amen. Amen. Verse 5, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should go do so in the land whither you go and to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and, and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. What's the other wish you can say about America? That we're a wise and understanding people. Unfortunately, in 2023, we, we do need to be, I feel like our country needs, does need to be made great again, church. We went a long ways away from God. I, I believe that, amen. I hope you understand that our country at one time was, was a godly nation, but it's not anymore. 
We need to get back to the things of God. Verse 7 there. For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them as Lord your, our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? Our thought comes, verse 9 here, says, Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the thing which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all days of thy life, but teach them thy sons and thy son's sons. Now look also in verse number 23, if you would please, that same chapter. It says, Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he hath made with you, and make you a graven image of the like of anything which the Lord thy God hath forbidden thee. Also turn look down there in verse number 31. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, amen, thank God, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers which he has sware unto thee. We'll stop reading there, for church, for the sake of time, and, and preach one thought tonight, lest ye forget. Let's pray, Lord God, we love you tonight. Father, we do want to thank you so much for the privilege to be at the, uh, Lord, here at the uh, Ephesus Baptist Church out here. Lord God, it's great to be, Lord God. Thank God for Pastor, Lord, Pastor Jeter, God, for being here, Lord, he spoke tonight, God. I pray, Father, you help us, Lord God, as we try and preach your word, God. Please, I pray, Lord, the words we, we have in our heart, God, will be able to be received, God, because our speech is understandable, God. I know we talk fast, God. Please, Lord, slow us down. Help us, Lord God, to be understood, God, and, and be help to your people, Lord God. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Lest you forget. The word there, forget, church, we give you the definition of that word. It means to lose the remembrance of, to let go from the memory. In Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. We, we have a tendency, church, as people to lose and forget about things that God's done for us. Amen. Right. We have a way of just not, not remembering how good God's been to us. Right. Is that right? Yeah. Think about it. Mean, if you've been saved any time, you can say, well, thank God God's been good to me for a long time. Amen. Well, we're living in a day now where folks are, are forgiven. Matter of fact, you look in the, in the, in the gospel of our book of our Timothy's uh, epistles, Paul says one of the, the last days they'll be forgiven the things of God. They'll be not unthankful in how good God's been to them. Amen. God's good to us. We all be thankful to God for God's goodness upon our lives. And we can understand that, that if it, when it comes to forgetting, we need to remember a few things. Let me give you about 10 things quickly. I know it's 10 things. A lot of, I'm not really going to expound upon them, church. I'm going to give them to you. I'm going to give you three things, and we'll, we'll be done. Amen. Ten things you can remember this, and we'll get to the message here tonight. Remember, number one, that you're more than an accident, amen. amen. God created you. Yes. Is that right, amen? amen. We didn't come from no monkey, amen. amen. We, we didn't come from, from no big bang theory. We, we, we were created by the holy God. He spoke, and we, 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 this world come exists. He, he formed Adam out of, his, out of the dust of the ground. We are made. Thank God, God is our creator, amen. amen. Number two, remember that your soul and spirit do not die. Someday you will stand before God for judgment. Amen. Right. That will put a little bit of terror, a little bit of a, a, a thing in our life to say, well, praise God, I should do the right. Amen. Right. Most folks just live like they don't, there is no tomorrow. Right. Like there is no judgment. Like, like who cares? I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. But, but praise God, church, we, we are, if you are saved, you're, you're, you're saved. You're going to heaven. Amen. Right. But your stewardship, the things you do for him will be judged one day. And we'll stand before him with, with, that, with that thought that God will judge us. We'll make sure we need to live for God and do what's right. Number three, remember that when you leave this world, you will enter eternity. Amen. Well, the preacher last night preached a great message on hell, just the, 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 the soberness of a place that's called hell. Right. There's only two places a person goes to when they leave this, their last right. world, leave their body. Right. One of them is heaven, and thank God you know I'm saved. We go to heaven. Amen. Yeah. Right. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Yeah. But also, Luke 16 says that, that and the rich man died and in hell looked with his eyes being right. torment. So, those are the two places. Those, those three is purgatory. There is no limbo. There is no, uh, this, I was talking to a friend of mine. He's a special needs guy that comes to our class on Tuesday nights. And I, he calls me every day. Of course, preacher, we're behind time in Alabama. So, he called me even earlier than he normally calls me, amen, <laughs> which is okay. I mean, I, I, I love talking to Mr. Aaron, amen. But anyway, he called me. I was talking to him because he's, he, he's Japanese, amen. And we begin to talk about Buddha and all those things about related to the Eastern religion. And my church, let me tell you something. Those, those people believe in some crazy stuff, amen? Right. They believe you can be reincarnated as a, as a cockroach and come back as a chicken. I mean, just all kind of crazy like that, amen? But what they do, they don't believe, they also believe that there, there is no eternity, like, like you and I believe. But there is an eternity that you will come, go to one day. One of them's heaven and one of them's hell, amen? Right. Number four, remember that heaven and hell are real places. Yeah. Real places. A lot of folks think heaven is, is like a, a cloud that probably be walk, floating around on, on, with a harp in our hands. I, I don't think that's at all what it is, church. Amen. 
Now, I would say this. I'll give you a little bit of just a little bit of thought here about, about heaven, and, and I'll move on to the next thought here. Now, honestly, when you read your Bible, book of Revelation, you, you find a place called the new heaven, new earth. And a lot of information we have about what eternity is going to be like is the new earth as far as what it's going to be like now. But heaven, where it is now, there's not a lot of information in your Bible about the heaven where it is now. We just don't have a lot of details about what our, our loved ones are doing right now. We just don't have that. Wish we did, amen. But we do know one thing, that, that there was Christ, amen. 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 To be absent the body, to be present with the Lord. That's what we do know. There was Christ. That's, 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 the, that's the same place the Lord to be. If you're saved, is to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. But there are real places, and people are heaven, hell, are real, are real people. They're there right now, and they're enjoying the things of God, or they're also either burning in a place called heaven. Now, Lord, help us tonight, amen. Number five, remember that you will be in one of the other for eternity. The preacher, this is our Wednesday night crowd. Why are you talking about things on Wednesday night? Well, like last night, there was an eight-year-old child there in that service that was lost there last night. I mean, I'm not trying to pull the best out of anybody, preach. I'm not trying to make anybody walk you out. I'm not doing it. I'm just trying to get you to understand that the heaven and hell are real. Right. If you're not saved, you're going to go to a place one day if you leave this world unsaved, amen. Right. That's why we got to understand that because we, we do forget about things. We need to be reminded. Why do you think they give us little cards when you go to the doctor and dentist office, amen? Mm -hmm. Because we're forgetful, amen. We, 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 have right. little, little, we even have these apps on our phone that remind you of your poem or whatever. They, Get text because you got to wake up the next morning. I always want to remind us of all these things because we're very forgetful people, you see. But remember that, what, that heaven and hell are real places. Amen. Number six, remember that Jesus, the Son of God, he died on the cross to become our sacrifice and our substitute. Amen. First Peter 3, verse 18, Christ also once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Amen. Thank God. That's the gospel. Amen. The death of Christ, the burial, the resurrection, that's the very gospel. Yeah. And you believe in that, that's how you go to heaven, amen, with that, that same belief amen. in the gospel. Not by being baptized, not by doing good good works. I, I had a, a, a meme come on Facebook today about those years. A guy, guy was talking about how, how when it comes to eternity or, or, or talks about salvation, that folks in the Old Testament, that, that they, it was a work salvation, folks in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. That ain't true, amen. A man's always been saved by grace through faith, Amen. They were looking to Christ, to the cross, and we're looking back to, toward the cross, amen. Right. They didn't get saved a different way. Now, Abraham got saved because he, he believed in God, and God uh, has righteousness. That's exactly right. He, he was saved by faith. Amen. Even, even the Paul talked about how Abraham was saved by faith in the New Testament. Just, just that belief system is so, so incredibly you know, crazy, but, but Christ, the gospel is how people are saved in this day and hour, Amen. Number seven, remember that your eternal destiny depends upon what you do with Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter necessarily what Abraham did back then for us here at church, but for you it matters what you do with Jesus Christ tonight, amen. Right. It matters what you've done. John 3, 36, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. Mm -hmm. He that believeth not the Son hath shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him in John 3, verse 36. Number eight, remember that no amount of this world's possessions or pleasures are worth throwing away your eternal future. I was at a, another funeral this week, but Brother David Teff, I'm standing over the homeless with Brother Jeter, and he was, he was, uh, his mom and dad's church had someone, the lady in the church passed away this week, we was at the funeral, and we, we talking to the guy at the funeral about the young man that passed away this week, and 17-year-old boy, and it's just sad to see a, a life gone so soon, so so quickly like that, and uh, talking about the foot, they mentioned the football team, like back home where, where we are, we, we preach, my pastor do every, every every year when the, when the football team gets together before they have their games, we go preach them before they go out uh, there. The day before, we, that's, that's been doing it for a couple of years. We enjoy that. It's a good ministry, amen. Those kids need to hear about the gospel too, amen, thank God. Amen. And we're glad we can be a part in our community and, and work in your community. Our, our community needs us to go out there in this world to tell them about Jesus, amen. Right. 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 Th th this, is, this is a church. This is our safe place. We can come here and get help, but we got to go out there and do the work for God. Yeah. But folks who are, who are just loving this world, loving the things this world, they're throwing away their eternal future, amen. Number nine, remember that tomorrow may be too late to get right with God. You know not what you should be on tomorrow, for what is your life? Right. It is even vapor that appeared for a little time and then passed away. I'm sure that, that seven-year-old boy probably never realized that that would have been his last day on earth, that day he lived, but, but it, it was. The old saying goes, you may, you may tire your shoes tonight or this morning, but Undertaker may untire your shoes before, 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 before the night goes down, whatever. We just never know what's going to happen here on this side of eternity, church. And lastly, remember that now is the best time to turn to Christ and be saved. Amen. Right. Well, I tell you, salvation, for me, the best thing that happened to me was being saved by God's grace. Right. And, and we shouldn't forget about those in our family that are lost. If you have loved ones, 
I, I was even reading it a while ago, pre preaching, I, was, I think it was, uh, it was either a, a track or, or something I was reading there, and, well, I forget what it was about, about witness, it was Brother Van Horst devotion what it was. He was talking about that when it comes to sinners, uh, Christ, when he was praying there in John City, he, or in the garden, he, he wasn't praying for the world, he was praying for you not to go to the world and tell them about him, about him amen. Well, we're the only hope for the world, I'm trying to say tonight, church. You and I are the mission. I know I'm a missionary to that rescue mission up there. That's what God's called me to do. But you and I, we go out in this world and talk to sinners. We're the only hope for them out there in this world. We're the only one that can tell them about Christ. We've got to open up our mouth. We've got to give them the gospel. We've got to share Christ with this world because that's what Christ wants us to do for him. Amen. But don't forget, don't, let's remember those things that I gave you tonight. But, but let me give you the three things unless we forget and we'll be done. Amen. Look here in, in verse 4, Deuteronomy 4, verse 4. Lest you forget, number one, what you have saw and experienced for the sake of your children, amen. Lest you forget what you have saw, what you have seen and experienced for the sake of your children. Look at in verse 4, or, or, or verse number 9 of our text, Deuteronomy 4, verse 9. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget these, the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. Amen. Well, see, I see that word sons' sons, and I, up here, I, as I am a, a people, amen, I, I, love, I love grandchildren, amen. How, how many grandparents we got in the church tonight, amen? Ain't grandchildren the best, amen? They're the best thing ever happened in my life. Right? I love my kids. Thank God for my children, but these grandbabies are much better than kids. Just, just saying, amen. <laughs> I love my girls. They're blessing, but them grandbabies, just, they're just w w way beyond. It's, it's amazing how much they are important. I'm just, I'm just I, love my, I love all my girls. I got, I got five, five girls, three, three daughters, and two grandbaby girls. and I love every one of them. They're, they're all special. Even like those son laws every once in a while, amen, but not very much. Just kidding, amen. But we're talking about here about... about Remembering what we've known to, I mean, our, our grandchildren, believe it or not, they're going to grow up one day. Right. Me and Brother Tap, we was riding today, we was talking about that very thing, about one day, these kids are going to grow up, and what's, what's our grandchildren going to experience one day? You there, the young people, you, we, what will your children experience one day? It's going to be a, a, a very, not a very good place in America, because as bad as it is today, it's going to be a lot worse 20 years from now, amen. Right. That's what we got to make sure we as God's people, as grandparents, as parents, make sure we share our faith of what we've experienced in our life, amen. amen. we, we got to make sure our, our, our family knows about what God did for us. Does, does your, your family know your testimony? Does your, does your children know how you got saved? My, 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 my dad was with me when my wife passed away back on <coughs> August 1st, 2020. He was there in the room with me because it was a situation preaching where you can only have one person with you. My daughter Hannah, she was married to my son O'Brien at the time, and she didn't want to go without Brian in the room, so she couldn't go with me. My daughter Sarah and Savannah, that, that they were twins. They didn't want to go in there without each other, so they really didn't want to go in there without one of the other. So they said, Dad, we, we're just going to let you go in there, I guess, by yourself, but it was pretty, pretty heartbreaking, so that's where I was. My dad said, well, Jamie, I'll go with you. I'll, I'll go in with you, and I'll be there with you that time. And it, I, I'm thankful my dad was with the church in that time. It was a very, very special time. My dad with me. My he was the best man at a wedding. He was a, one of the best friends him and mom was when I had living on earth. I thank God for parents. God's been good to me. Amen. That day was February, was August 1st. You go forward six months on the calendar to February 1st, and we're sitting there at, at around the bed. And there's my dad also on a ventilator. And we had to take him all around that, that same that same day, six months to a day later, church. We was there with him, my, my sister, my brother, and my mom was all around him that day. And he left this world. And there we go, last year, April 15th, tax day last year, um, my mother passed away. She battled with, with some uh, cirrhosis of the liver, where she just had a lot of issues with, with pain medication, just a lot of problems with, with her liver for, for, for weeks, lay there in the hospital for three weeks, and she left this world. So preacher, what I'm saying, church, I'm, I'm starting to say this, we're not always going to be here, amen. Right. I, I'm not going to, I'll be 50 this year, but when I'll be 50 in, in September, I'm still 40. I'm still in my 40s, but thank God for that. Amen. That sure keeps. I've been saying to to all brothers, yeah, I, I'm almost 50. I need to say, thank God I'm still in my 40s. Amen. amen. Enjoy as much as I can while I got it. Amen. But as as I get older, and as you, you, you folks here from you get older, you understand that, that we're not going to always be here. We got to make sure we, we share with our family what God's done for us, so they can understand what what, what, it, what it means about being saved, what it means about things of God. I mean, there's there's experiences I've had. My girls want to hear about. Amen. 
How many got loved ones living here around like your grandparents to hear them tell stories about their days go by when I, whenever you go? I, I enjoy those times. And I, I, we, 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 lest we forget what we've saw and experienced for the sake of our children, amen. Look there back there in verse 9. It says, only take heed to thyself. We're going to take heed. It means this, church. It means to mind. It means to regard with care. It means to take notice of or to attend, to observe. We've got to make sure that we are, are, are listening to the message by, by taking heed to, to our lives because one day our, our life is going to be over and unless we, unless we share with our family what God's done for us, we will never have the opportunity to do that, you see. And I, you, you must agree with church, a lot of times you witness to your family, to your, to your loved ones, and sometimes the hardest people to witness to in your entire life. And we love them the most. But for whatever reason, it seems like it's so challenging to just tell them, you know, that God loves you and we want to see you saved and are you saved. Just ask those, those general questions to a, to a close family member sometimes could be the hardest thing you'd ever do. But if we don't do it for our children and our grandchildren, we're, not, we're, we're going to lose our opportunity with them because they're, we're not going to be there. They're going to forget it that we even was even here one, one time. It says there also says in verse 9, only take heed thyself and keep thy soul diligently. Look in 1 Peter 1, if you would please. 1 Peter 1. Talking about keeping your soul. I, I like this thought. Amen. That God gave me. Amen. 1 Peter 1 and verse, verse number 3 there. 1 Peter 1, verse 3. It says, And blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath forgotten us again to a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from, from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible. And undefiled, and that faith not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. The, the saying goes there in verse, verse uh, 9 of our text there, keep thy soul diligently. But church, if we realize that, that God is keeping us by his power, amen. amen. That will give you a little bit of comfort, a little bit of solace that we ain't got to even keep our soul. God's keeping us, amen. You, you, we, we're, we're, we're so safe, church, it's pitiful how safe we are tonight, amen. Well, whenever God saved me as an 18-year-old young man, I, I got saved. I didn't know, as, as some of us may not realize, how long we'd even be saved. We might not understood everything about salvation. I thank God it is eternal life, amen? Everlasting life, when, what God does, God does forever. But here, the, the, the writer here is saying, keep thy soul diligently, and lest thou forget. You know, so we've got to understand that, that we, we can keep, it, keep that in our hearts and be thankful that God is keeping you and I, amen? We're, we're saved, and God's keeping us saved, and and number three, we find in the same chapter we're seeing there, the last part of that chapter, it says, and teach them to thy sons and thy sons' sons. Look two chapters over there, chapter six there, in verse number uh, five. Deuteronomy six and verse number five, the Bible there says, and, th and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk to them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as fronts between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house, and on the gates, and it shall be, and it shall be when the Lord thy God shall brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not. Thank God God here is telling you, these children of Israel, to make sure you teach your, your children, amen. Teach them about the things of God. Amen. We, we, we are missing, I think we're missing the, the opportunity we have to, to be the teacher and be, be the responsibility to, to lead our children in the right way. When, when I was thinking of this message that the Lord was giving me today, church, I thought about that song several years ago. I heard the, 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 the group sing that song, For the Sake of Thy Children. I'm going to give you these words here quick. I know we're getting close to time. Praise God, we're real close to time. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, we're going to close in here in a second, preacher. Let me give you a song here. We'll give you a few thoughts, and, and, and we'll, we'll close in here in a few moments. The song here says, When I look at my children, my heart's full of pride. When I think of all they are and all they have, they have inside. But then I look around and see evil, evils, see evils rising tide. You listen to me, church? And it lets me know that I cannot leave. I must stand by their side. For the sake of my children, I will guard the gate. Are you guarding the gate for your children tonight? And if I must stand alone, I'm not going any place. Like I'm singing like, like Brother Jeff there does his, his singing, amen. While entertainers preach perversion with their fingers in our face, I'll lift my holy Bible 
and get down on my knees. I will take a stand for righteousness, whatever it costs me. You better believe you're going to stand for God's riches. It may cost a few things. I will lift the Holy Bible, get down on my knees. I will take a stand for, for righteousness, whatever it costs me. Our nation's lost their values. Our leaders have walked away, so it's up to me and you to rise and stand for the children's sake. He begins to go into this recitation. He talks about, I won't get all detailed, but he's talking about how the violence of our, our land is becoming so rampant, how the uh, you know, sex, drug, and alcohol, they're, they're becoming America's. You know, no, he's because of experience, not because of, of here, but, but they're learning these things themselves. School shootings going on in our country, the video games, the, the, the movies that are just constant profanity across our, 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 our airways of, of our homes, whatever, church. Forty years ago, the teacher listed as the number one classroom problem was gum chewing in class. That ain't what the main problem is today, I would say. Right. Even beyond it, this was Brother Silver wrote this song many years ago. So think about 2023, where we are now. My pastor was at the the the, uh, the Walgreens there at home recently, and there the toy section. The Walgreens was your pride skirt for, for little little boys to wear skirts for for, for Pride Month. The beads they had the little beads like if you know what beads are when you go to lost, lost, uh, go to New Orleans, you get bees, but a woman would, would expose herself. That's what was getting a toy section at, at a drugstore. The preacher would say, I'm saying it was bad with video games and violence. That's still bad. It's still going on, by the way. How many of you understand that we're hearing about, we, we, we know there's happening about school shootings and, and mass shootings, but, but the news ain't covered much about it. They're just saying it and, and moving on. We used to hear about it. It was like it would just take over the news cycle for, for a whole day or two. It doesn't it happen like that anymore. Now they're pushing all this, all this you know, all these agenda upon us, and we're having to take their stuff. And it's one thing, church, for the transgender stuff to be out there, but they want you not to swallow it and accept it like it's, it's part of our life. And it's, it's not part of my life. Can, I, can somebody say amen tonight? Amen. amen. God help us, church. We, we got to take a stand. Our, our children know, are worth standing for. Amen. amen. Where, where, are the, where are the parents? Where, 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 why, why are we we're trying our best to keep them from this, this perverse this world going this, the way it's going? Amen. The songwriter said, I have too much invested in my children. I've loved them too much, prayed for them too long, walked the floor, carried their fever bodies at midnight too many times so that a government that's lost its respect for God or a Hollywood that's focused on corrupting the morals of a nation or a rock star who spits in the face of God still the minds of my children and tell me how they ought to be raised. They're my children. It's my job, and I will do my duty until God relieves me, and I will do it for the sake of my children. Amen. Quiet, amen. That's good. It's good to be quiet, amen. Watch them. We're quiet. We're listening. We're hearing what's, what's going on with the Word of God. Brother Jeter, I heard a preacher say one time, that every sermon you hear is intended for you, man. Every time we hear preachers preach, like Brother, Brother Shan preached this night, that message was for me. I, I, I was, I was touching my heart. I, I want to pray for everybody. I want God to move upon my heart. So if it come to altar, it'll come to the time of the podium, and said, Preacher, I want to acknowledge. I want to make sure I, I, I want stuff in my life to be right, so I don't need a revival. What are you saying, preacher? I'm, I'm saying we, we're, we're forgetting that the, about the things that God's got for us to remember, about teaching our children the things of God. Number two, teach them about the Creator and the covenant or the cause of instruction. If I give you one thought on that, we look there in verse 3 and 4, moving that to the last order. We just, I, I don't want to linger long, church. I'm so sorry for being a long preacher. Look at verse 3 and 4 there. It says, Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor come out of worship. For all the men that followed Baal Peor, the Lord thy God destroyed them from among you. But ye that cleave unto the Lord your God are alive every one of you this day. Amen. Thank God. If, you, if, you, if we'll serve God and do what's right, God will take care of you and I. Exactly. But if we'll serve the God of this world, if we'll serve the, the idols of the world, and, and there's plenty of idols out there to choose from, you, you can make a sport your God. You can make a, a job your God. Right. You can make a dollar bill your God. Right. You can make a, anything. Even you can make your own child your God. Sometimes your own child could tell you, Mom, Dad, let's do this, and you're going to skip church for whatever my little kid says, whatever. It's time we as parents be parents, amen. Right. It's time we as adults be adults, and we do what's right for the sake of our children, for the sake of our God, amen. Right. He, he's, worth, he's worth serving that church. He's the creator. He's the, he gives us a better covenant, amen, than what we even had back in that day. Lest we forget what we saw and experienced for the sake of our children. Lest we forget when it comes to the creator, the covenant, or the cause of our destruction. Number three, lest we forget when it comes to our God won't forsake us. He is faithful and he won't forget. Amen. Thank God. Look, look at verse 31 and we're down here. Verse 31. For Lord thy God is a merciful God. 
He will not forsake thee, thank God. Neither destroy thee, nor forget the cut of thy father, which he swear unto thee. And thank God God is good to you and me tonight, church. I, I'm a blessed man. You say, preacher, you lost your wife three years ago. I did, church. That's horrible. The brother preached on Monday, brother, brother Junior, he lost his son some time ago, and, and, and the pastor there, you pastor there, lost his wife recently. So it's, there was three people there Monday night that we, we was all just to preach, preach about that, going through hard times. But churches, we're going through hard times. What, what, what's the word about when they're going through hard times? That they ain't got God. I'm going to read you Lamentations 3, a few verses. Lamentations 3, and, and I promise you, I'll read verse there, and we'll close, church. Lamentations 3, verse 21. The songwriter said, "This is, of course, from, from a songwriter, Mr. Um, Jeremiah. He was crying. He, he, he was he was in, in constant dread and and and, 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 and uh, almost in a, in a type of place. Church in Jeremiah's life, he was a weeping prophet. The Bible calls it because he had a lot of hard time in his life. But look at the hope he gives here in these verses in Jeremiah three, verse twenty-one to verse twenty-six. Jeremiah says, this, "This I recall to my mind. Therefore, have I hope." It is of the Lord's mercy that, that we are not consumed because of compassion. His compassion fail not, amen. He won't forsake you and me, church. He won't forsake us. He'll look after us. He'll, he'll, he'll take care of us. Thank God God is good to you, my way, amen. Number two, not only he won't forsake us, he, he also, he is faithful. Look at verse 20 and 24 there. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, said the, said the writer here, he said my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. Thank God we can have hope in God. Though. That word hope there is mentioned three times in these verses. He won't forsake us. He is faithful and lasting. He, he won't forget us because he can't lie. Look at verse 25 and 26. The Lord is good to them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Thank God God's not going to forget about us. Why are we going to forget about him and, and, and forget to tell our kids and forget to think about how good God's been to us tonight, church? I said before you folks tonight, uh, a blessed man. When God, when God burned upon my heart, brother, brother Jude, to start this ministry or, or go this ministry back in 2021, I, I could have I said no. And, and we don't have to serve God tonight. But if we want to be blessed, we've got to do it God's way. Amen. Let's all stand out with our heads bowed, our eyes closed. We just want to have a moment of invitation. If God spoke in your heart, we won't have any claim. We just have a moment of invitation. If God spoke in your heart, you can come to this altar. We'll wait a few moments. If, if my moves, they can come. But otherwise, we'll just pray. This is kind of message, church. A lot of times, we don't, we don't require an invitation. It requires us to do inventory. We take back home, and we can e examine our life and find maybe areas we can improve on in our life. That's why I try to do what I hear preaching. Amen. Try to see what I can do in my life to get healthy and closer to God. Lord God, we love you tonight, Father. We do want to thank you, Lord, so much, Lord God. Lord, no, I'm just a, a guy from my town, God, but thank God I, I'm your man, Lord God. You let me come back here with tonight, God, to preach your word for this great congregation of folks. God, thank God for your pastor, God, and the capacity he has, Lord God, for permission, Lord God, but let us come by and just preach this good congregation of folks, Lord, tonight, God. Lord, I pray, Lord God, we wouldn't forget the things you've done for us, how good you've been to us, Father. I pray we remember these things, God, and, and keep them, Lord, keep in our hearts and lives. Keep the good, Lord God, in our hearts and lives, and teach us our family, God, and remember, God, how good you've been to us. Lord, do a great work, I pray, and everything in our lives. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I admire these men of God that will say, Lord, I'll just submit my all to you. I'll give my life to you. You used me as you see fit. And uh, go and, and travel around this nation and, and pull up into in new churches. And uh, I tell you, it's very intimidating to me to go to preach. I get so nervous when I go to preach to people that I don't know, brother. It, it, and I admire your ability to, to stand and proclaim the word of God. And I tell you, I, I, I got a blessing tonight from that, and I appreciate it. You know, as he was preaching, the Bible says, keep thy, it said, keep thy soul with all diligence. Now, I was thinking about that. That word keep is translated as guard. Yeah. Uh, the Bible says in many places, keep something or keep thy heart with all diligence. I'm here to tell you tonight, church, there's some things that's worth guarding in our lives. Listen, there's some things that, that God has given us, some liberties, some freedoms 
some truths that God has given us that this world and this that Satan is trying to take away. And there's some things that's worth guarding. Boy, you better be sure to guard your soul. That's what it says. Keep thy soul with all diligence. That means keep it clean, keep it right. The Bible says keep thy heart uh, because out of it are all the issues of life. We better keep our soul and our heart right and keep them dedicated unto the Lord. That those things are worth guarding. Because those things are what we teach our children with. And can I tell you, your children are worth guarding. Yes, sir. Boy, this, this world is out to get them, and uh, Satan is out to get them. So there's some things that's worth guarding or keeping. And uh, I'm thinking, uh, I thank the Lord for allowing us to, to have the knowledge to do that and to keep those things. Brother Jamie, thank you again for that. Uh, did you, you got some prayer cards with you? I'll take those to the back with us tonight, and I want you to just come by and give them a uh, Pick up a card, take it home with you, and uh, as we, we consider what the Lord would have us to do in supporting these ministries. We've heard from several ministries lately, and uh, I'm, I'm thankful that God keeps sending men and by to, to share the work that God is doing, and if he puts it on this church's heart to get involved, we, we'll do that. But listen, you can be involved in this man's ministry, whether we give financial or not. If you take one of those prayer cards, and when you buy your head, you pray for them. Listen, that is... That is as powerful as anything you can do. So you take a, a prayer card, and uh, you go and tell Brother Jamie you'll be praying for him. He'll be traveling back home. He's from up in Virginia. There must be something about that. God is sending us all kind of Virginia folks. Amen. I love Brother Dusty and Miss Anna. They come from Virginia, too, brother. You probably don't know that. Our youth pastor, they come from Virginia. We're trying to southern uh, uh, get them southern fried, I guess what you'd say. We're doing pretty good. They, 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 they're fitting in real good, <clears throat> but we're thankful uh, for all the ones. There's another one that came uh, from Virginia just the other day. Who was uh, did we meet that was telling they were from Virginia? Uh, a, a lot of Virginia folks has is, is made their way through, so we're thankful for them and all that, that God is doing. Amen. Anybody got a word or announcement tonight before we dismiss? Don't forget all the requests that's been made, the prayer requests. Don't forget to be praying about what the Lord would have you to do. Uh, also, don't forget tomorrow we'll be going to get, get peaches. We're looking forward to that. Be praying for us as we go and uh, looking forward to all. And listen, Sunday night, don't forget it, is the ice cream social night, okay? I want you all to come. There's a lot of you guys that, that say, ah, it's going to be hot. Man, it's going to be hot anywhere. But listen, we got all the ice cream you can eat to cool down with. If you get too hot, we'll get one of them kids to hit you with a water balloon and get you wet and, and cool you off. But uh, it'll be a good time of fellowship. That's how we get to know one another better. That's how we get to, to uh, fellowship. And there's a lot of you guys that say, well, I don't, I don't know all these new people that's coming in. This is a perfect opportunity to go and, and meet some of them and, and become friends with them because we're, we're, we're already family. Amen. We're in the Lord's house together. So. You, you don't forget those things. If we don't have any other words of announcements tonight, we're going to uh, step to the back of the church.